often ask me the story of being in jail and the number of times that I got shoved in there by families who wanted to impale my life in a way that made me unsuccessful and unable to teach in my life in theory. And the way that police officers do that is they try to impede a life, then they try to take over a life, and then they try to steal from a life. And I'm pretty sure, based on the number of men who's come near me, who are obviously officers of an American force, that they have done a good job thieving from my storage unit and taking things not theirs and making it theirs. What I do know is that when I left jail, after the three months that I had to serve in the community of Indianapolis, someone had illegally moved my mail from my post office box to the jail, and they didn't have the lawful right under federal law to touch my mail. At the same time, the company that was helping me to pay for that mailbox, the philanthropic group, wanted to keep a copy of my actual mailbox key, which was, as you all know, illegal. You don't have the right to copy a public or U.S. post office mailbox because of those reasons. You can usually get two keys when you rent them, but only those two keys belong to you. Now, the other day, I found a sweater, and inside the sweater was a bunch of keys, which I'm pretty sure belonged to a company. But the question is, who put them there? And why would they throw that away? Somehow. But the truth is, when I left jail, everything precious to me in the two bags I had went missing. No one was willing to give me back my clothing or give me back my necklaces or give me back my medical physical things or give me back anything that was mine. So two duffel bags worth of things that were precious to me and being carried with me at the time went missing. One of which was a silver cross that had turquoise and red type of a garnet that you might find in Arizona, and I forget what they're called, in it. I had gotten it carefully, like I do with almost everything, as practically one of a kind, at an antique store. And I'm pretty sure that the police department or the sheriff department divvied up my things and kept things as a trophy as they plotted and schemed to pursue me after I left jail to ruin me across state lines. And they did a pretty good job in doing that. Some bastard Satan has been coming at me during the night while I get my few hours, very few hours of sleep for my life and has been pinching my ankle to the point that it's sort of debilitating for walking. And someone who's allowed to do that under security cameras must be black instead of white. Because if a white person is approaching me, then probably a security man who's black is going, oh, it's their buddy. But if it's a black person approaching me, then the black person may just turn his head and do nothing. Because that is what reverse racism does. It says the laws don't apply to me, but they might apply to you. And that is something that in America we just can't do. The liars of a family are lying con completely. When you ask them a question, is, where is my legal property and possessions and the presence that I've received across my lifetime? And they don't answer. It's an illegal act. And they've been wasting my time and wasting my money because for several months now, God has been asking me to ask them. And I've been asking them and they refuse to tell me. And I ask my eldest sister and who's still unfortunately living in the bitch that she is. And she says, ask someone else. So I ask that person and they stall and they bullshit their way out of their responsibility that at no time do they have the right to do anything with my property but maintain it. And at the time of my mother's death, she should have come directly to me based on the properties of the assignment by my late father to explain to me what had been happening from the graces of my mother, but to make a strategy plan of how to make the transition back to my hands. She failed to do that. At this time, they're trying to require me to force me to go back to different places. And the answer is no. I am not liable to you. You are legally liable to me. And your foolery, little girl, was thinking that your family and friends network, that's yours, 
had a right to take and steal my legal property.